Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking all about lips and specifically I'm going to be sharing my top tips of how to prevent your lipstick, your lip liner, your lip gloss from bleeding past your lip lines. And then I'm also going to share some tips of how to line your lips and just make them look as full and as plump and luscious as possible. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and now let's get started. Now I have heard from many of you that you felt like as part of the lovely aging process, those lines on the lips have become more pronounced and therefore that has contributed to more lip liner bleeding, etc. Now I am personally somebody who has had this issue for years. So long before I turned even 40, I was having this issue. Well, a couple of years ago, I did a video and I'll link that in the description box below because it might have some extra tips I don't cover today. But I discovered a trick that started working miracles when it came to preventing lip bleeding. So I'm gonna share that, but I'm also going to share some additional tips that you can do along the way. Now, obviously you don't have to do all of these tips every day, but perhaps you've tried one or two of these tips and you're still having issues. So I wanna just be thorough and give you lots and lots of options. So as we get started, I'm going to insert clips of my lip process today. And then at the end, I'm going to share some specific additional products that are my favorites. So the first step that I did today and is one that you should do pretty regularly. I try to do it one to two times a week at least, and that is to exfoliate your lips. This not only is going to help remove dead skin cells on your lips, thus making them look a little smoother, but it's also going to help promote circulation, which is really important for collagen production, which we're getting less and less of as we get older. Now the product that I'm showing you today, of course, has been discontinued because it's fabulous. It's the Mary Kay Satin Lips Lip Mask. So I'll show you this, but I'll give you some other alternatives as well. So I just place this on my lips. You let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute or so. And then I take a damp washcloth to wash this off. So whether you're doing a sugar scrub or something else, you can still use this same removal process. And you'll see as I take this off, the color of my lips is much brighter and deeper red. And so obviously the circulation has been stimulated there, but my lips immediately feel smoother. They look smoother. The lines are more diminished. So again, a really good important step to get you started. Now, if you can't get your hands on that Mary Kay Satin Lips Lip Mask, there are lots of other lip exfoliating products and most of them nowadays are coming in either a stick form like this one from e.l.f. e.l.f. has several different scented versions and this one's the mint and they have, it's basically like balm wrapped with sugar mixed in. And so you just rub this all over your lips and then I usually take my finger, rub it in, and then I'll remove the rest with a damp washcloth. Or there are also lots of other products that come in a little jar that are basically sugar with some great smelling things mixed in that you again can apply with your finger and use to exfoliate. Now, quite honestly, one of the easiest things you can do is just Go to your pantry, get some sugar. If you have the raw sugar crystals, that'll exfoliate even more. Add a little bit of coconut oil or olive oil, rub that in and then remove it and you're good to go. But now that we have taken off all that dead skin and we've kind of given our lips a workout, it's really important to follow up immediately with really good hydration. You can use a lip mask like the um, Bite Agave lip mask or the Laneige lip mask. I have that in my bathroom so I don't have that handy. That's what I use at night. Or what I like to do personally if I am in the process of putting on makeup, I like to go in with a lip plumping gloss. I feel like with freshly exfoliated lips, my lips are much more receptive and responsive to a plumping type of product. Now, one that I love and I've actually almost used the entire tube of is the Buxom. This is the collagen infused lip serum. 
who doesn't like that idea of extra collagen, right? Um, this definitely has a little more needly stinging. It's not painful, but you're gonna feel this one more than the traditional Buxom lip polishes. I, however, feel like these lip polishes do just about as much good as this does. So if you have one of the lip polishes and you like this, go ahead and just slather that on your lips. Today I used one of my other favorites. Um, this is the City Lips and I have a new shade of this. This is Nude York. So I thought, you know, we're getting into fall. Let's just slather this on. So you'll see this going on my lips. I like to apply a little more than normal after I've exfoliated my lips. But what I like about the City Lips is there is no stinging happening, but I do feel like it does add a good bit of hydration and fullness to the lips. So if you're somebody who can't handle that plumping feeling or that pepperminty tingle, that's a good option. Another one I recently talked about in my dupes video are the Lifter Glosses from Maybelline. This is also another really good formulation. It has hyaluronic acid, so another good thing to put on freshly exfoliated lips. Now, after applying that lip gloss or your really heavy duty lip mask, whatever you're doing, I like to let that set on my lips while I put the rest of my makeup on. And that's what I did today. So I finished up the rest of my makeup and that gives that balm or that gloss a good amount of time to really soak in, to plump up the lips as much as possible. And then the next step that is super important to do is you need to take a tissue or you could take a washcloth as well and you need to gently pat off that excess moisture that's on your lips. Now you're pressing it in so it's not, you're not like scrubbing it off but press it in, remove all the excess and then what I like to do if I really need that extra help to prevent bleeding is to go around the edge of the lips and make sure that I remove any extra moisture. If you use a super dewy foundation or you're using a tinted moisturizer, you're gonna wanna make sure that you press off any extra foundation or anything that has crept up next to your lip lines as well because that can help break down your lip liner and that's not what we want. All right, now it is time for my secret weapon. <laughs> And that is the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I've been getting a lot of questions recently because many of you are new to my channel and so you're seeing me do this in my makeup tutorials time after time and you're very confused and I understand why. So the MAC Paint Pots, they now come in scads of colors. I don't even know how many they come in. These are primarily meant to use on your eyes as either eyeshadow or a base for eyeshadow. And they come in shimmer formulas and they also come in matte formulas. So what's real important here is you want to choose one of the matte formulations that closely matches your skin tone. For me with my yellow undertones to my skin and more light to medium skin tone, the Soft Ochre shade is the perfect one for me. If you have pink undertones to your skin, even leaning more neutral painterly is going to work well for you. Again, light to medium. If you are a medium to deeper shade skin tone, one that is going to work for you is Groundwork. This one obviously is going a little bit deeper and then they have even a couple of super deep shades as well. So you wanna choose a color that is close to your skin tone. Now you can apply this with your fingers. That's typically what I do because I'm in such a hurry by the time I get to applying my lips products. But today I'm gonna show you using a brush. So I am taking now just the e.l.f., this is the smudge brush, and I am just taking a little bit of that product and going around the edge of my lips and then slightly overlapping the edge of my lips. So what this is doing, I have very uneven lip lines, and so this is going to act kind of like a concealer would in disguising that uneven line, but because it is more of a primer formula, this grips your skin and your lips and really helps create kind of a really strong barrier to prevent things from bleeding past it. 
Now it's really important, especially if you're using a brush, cause I feel like I get a little heavy handed with a brush. You really wanna go back with your finger and press it into the skin. You want to make sure you don't have any excess product. But again, you can overlap your lip line, but you don't wanna get this too far onto your lips because it can be a little bit drying. So we did all that work to promote some extra hydration so we don't wanna overly dry the lips. So once that has been on your lips, you want to let it sit until it sets, which if you can give it a good minute or two, that is best. If you get in a hurry, you can go to this next step and that is to apply a little bit of setting powder and you want this to be translucent setting powder. I feel like if you go in with a powder, like a powder foundation, that is going to make this area look a little extra cakey. So you wanna just go in with a translucent powder. I'm using the e.l.f. Pressed HD powder today. This is just an inexpensive one. I'm using a powder puff and I'm just pressing that around the edge of the lips. Now, not only is this going to help set that primer in place, but it's also going to help provide a stronger barrier to our lip color so that it does not bleed past our lip lines. Now the next step, which is super important, is lining our lips. Now I'll share with you quickly just a few of my favorites. Now I do love a good NYX lip liner. I think these are so great, inexpensive, but they are not the longest wearing and they also are not the greatest at preventing lip feathering. They do help, so if this is what your budget can afford, go for it. It's still better than nothing. But if you are somebody who has an extremely hard time getting lip color to stay in your lips, I would highly recommend paying a little bit more and getting one of these slightly more expensive lip liners. So the first one I'll show you is by Lancome. It's been a while since I've used one of these in a video, but these are really super long wearing. These are the La Lip liners. I have two shades of that. Those liners and the Urban Decay Glide On lip pencils, those were for a long time my top two favorites. Both of these have really good longevity and hold power. Well, then I finally splurged and tried the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheats. And I have to say, these actually hold on just a smidge longer than either of those two, but almost, they're almost equivalent. Now these, I feel like I go through faster than the Urban Decay or the Lancome ones. They're all smooth gliding on the lips, but those other two, the Lancome and the Urban Decay, I feel like they're not quite as soft, so I don't have to sharpen them quite as often. Now, recently, my new favorite that I discovered are these from Smashbox. Can you tell? I own almost all of the colors available now, and these are the Smashbox Be Legendary Line and Prime Lip Pencils. When I tried these, I said, okay, that's it. My search has ended. I have found the lip pencil that holds the longest. And you will see in a moment as I apply these, my extra tips of how to make them last. But these pencils, they are softer formula, so you are gonna go through these a little bit faster, but I have found that these will stay on your lips even after you have eaten and your lipstick has worn off, you still have liner on. So I feel like you actually need to apply these less often than many of the others. So I feel like kind of evens out when you take into that account that you don't have to apply them as often. Now, one final one I wanna mention from the drugstore that is also very long wearing and they are the L'Oreal, these are called the Color Riche Matte Sharpenable Lip Liner. And I have two, you can see I have almost used up an entire one. So these are also super long wearing and nice and creamy formula. Okay, so let's go to some lip lining tips. Now, as I insert my application of lip liner today, I used the Smashbox Medium Brown Shade. This is one of my favorites. I find it so versatile. I love to wear it with pinks, browns, peaches, you name it. 
So what you're going to do, if you struggle to get a straight line, the first thing that you wanna make sure is that your pencil is sharp, but not too sharp. If your pencil has a super, super point on it, it's going to make your line super thin and then you're going to have to be extra precise and it's also going to be a little bit harder to blend out. And now we're going to start on our lower lip in the center. You want to just draw towards the outer edge of your natural lip line because we have that paint pot down. We can cheat our lip line a little bit. And so you want to follow kind of along the center of that lower lip line. And then we're going to go from the outer edge down to meet the line on either side. So now we're going to move up to the upper lip and I have a Cupid's bow and I like to just follow my natural lip line. So you do whatever your natural lip line allows. If you don't have as pronounced of a Cupid's bow as I do, then follow what you have. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first in the center and outline that Cupid's bow. Now I am right-handed. And so as I do the left side of my mouth, I am starting from the outer corner. If you have downturned lips, don't go all the way to the corner. You're going to stop just a little bit on the inside. But what you want to do is follow the outer edge of your lip line and draw it up to meet the cupid's bow. And as you do, because you're starting at the corner and going up, it's naturally going to kind of push outside of your natural lip line a little bit and give your upper lip the look of fullness. Now on my right side, I think it's partly because I can't see what I'm doing. I always struggle to do this. So I will start from the top down and then draw up just really slowly from the corner up to meet that. Then it's real important to make sure that you do blend into the lips with your lip liner. And you can use just the side of your pencil to press this into the lips and blend it in because this is going to help not only give more grip for your lipstick as we apply it, but it's also going to prevent you from having that horrible just wear down where all you can see is just your lip liner like we used to wear in the 90s, right? So to prevent that, you want to make sure that you fill in most of your lips with your lip liner, and you can also press it in with a lip brush. If you have one, that can be a useful tool as well. If you don't, it's okay. You can use your finger, but you wanna press that in. Now, it's real important to let your lip liner sit for a minute or so until it sets. Down. What this is going to do is it is again going to make sure that once we add our lipstick on top of it, that it's fully set so that the lipstick is not then moving around this nice barrier that we just put on our lips. Now, after adding the lip liner, you can go in. There are a couple of things that you can do to give the illusion of a fuller lip. And one of them is to go in with a highlighter. I'm going in with the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Highlighter in Highlight 01. And I'm just placing a little bit of that on the vertical part, the vertical lines of the Cupid's bow. So as this little the folds that go up towards your nose. If you add a little bit of highlight up here, it gives the illusion that that upper lip is slightly more lifted. So again, just a little extra for those of you who are looking for that added look of fullness. Now let's go in with lipstick. So one of the questions I get so often is what is the longest wearing lipstick? Shirley, I don't wanna to have to reapply throughout the day. What is the best one? <sighs> Technically, a liquid lipstick, a liquid matte lipstick is going to be one of the most long wearing. However, as we get older, that dry down formula, matte formula on the lips is not going to be the most flattering look for our lips, especially if you have a lot of lip lines. And if you like to wear a color that's a little bit lighter on the lips, like more of a nude color, the liquid matte lipsticks are not going to look as flattering on you. However, there are several matte formulas that come in a traditional lipstick 
that are super long wearing and will last for hours on the lips. Yes, they will transfer. Yes, you'll probably have to apply them at some point, maybe after you've eaten a really greasy meal, but they're not going to have the same quick wear down that more of a cream sheen formula would have. MAC Cosmetics has a whole line of matte lipsticks. A couple of my favorite shades that are very neutral are Whirl and Soar. I also love the shade Modesty and they have a whole slew of colors in that formulation and they are super long wearing, especially when paired with a lip liner. Now at the drugstore, Maybelline has some matte formula lipsticks and their tube is matte, so that tells you it's a matte formula. These I have also found to be very long wearing. This is Divine Wine. If you're looking for a really deep fall red shade, this is Clay Crush, which is another favorite. It's a very warm kind of neutral shade. And then of course, Charlotte Tilbury, her matte revolution lipsticks. I don't find these as long wearing as the MAC matte formulas, but they are long wearing and they're very comfortable on the lips. They're not going to dry out your lips. And then finally, the one that I am using today is actually not a matte formula, but it is super long wearing and it is the Buxom Full Force Lipstick. So what I love about this formulation, again, it has a little bit of plumping, of a plumping formula, which helps kind of disguise lip lines. So for me, going into fall and winter especially, I tend to go for a slightly more moisturizing lipstick color and I don't mind just throwing this in my purse and knowing I'll need to reapply later. So as I apply this lipstick, you're going to see that I am not going all the way to the edge of my lips with this lipstick. So that is the trick if you're using a more cream formula lipstick or a frost formula lipstick, you want to try and not go all the way to the edge of your lips. You want to just blend it in if you need to with your finger into your lip line. Because it has more hydration, if you take it to the edge of your lips, it's going to push that lip line to start bleeding. This comes in lots of different shades. So great formulation. It does have a little bit of shine and sheen on its own and it's perfect the way it is. But you know me and I wanna show you kind of a typical Shara Lee lip combination. So what I love to do is top it with a gloss or a shimmery lipstick but it's really important before we do that is to make sure we blot off the excess lipstick. So just lightly blot the lips because we wanna leave a good amount of that color on the lips. But now we're gonna go in with one of my favorite glosses and this is the Smashbox Petal Metal. And again, you're gonna make sure you stay away from the edge of the lips. So keep this more in the center. Also by placing it in the center, something that's shimmery or glossy, it's going to make the lips look a little more pouty and a little bit fuller. So as I put that on the lips, again, keeping it in the center, then you can take your lip brush or just your finger and just gently pat the edge of it so that it blends into your lipstick on either side without bringing it all the way to the edge of your lipstick. So now the finished lips, you can see they look healthy, they look plump and full, and yet we don't have any bleeding outside the lip lines, and I won't have bleeding for hours. And so one question that I get is, what do I do when I have to reapply my lipstick? Do I need to go back in with the paint pot again? My answer to that would be, it depends on which lip liner you have used. When I use the Smashbox lip pencil, I don't find that I need to go back in with the MAC paint pot first and go through the whole rigmarole again. But if I have not used that, then many times if I'm using a super emollient lip liner and lipstick or lip gloss, I will sometimes bring that along and just touch on a little bit around the edge of the lips and then reapply my lip combination. Again, once you get this down, I know it seemed like a long process, lots of steps, 
it really only takes a couple of minutes once you get it down. And again, I feel like it's worth the extra time because you're going to have more confidence as you go through your day that your lipstick and your lip liner are not just creating this awful mess past your lip lines. I hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you for all of you that requested it. Keep sending me your requests. I do keep a list of what videos you want to see and I'm working through that list one by one. So be sure you check the description box below. I'll have all the products that I talked about in today's video and what I applied to my lips linked and listed down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.